Well, every year I try to pick some type of fun, spooky Halloween game, and usually a Resident Evil or some survival horror. I believe last year was Code Veronica, and I have done Resident Evil 1 and 2, like a ton. Now, this year I've had a chance to play something I've been meaning to for a while, Project Firestart. Uh, it is by Dynamics. It was published by EA, directed by Jeff Tunnell. And it is often hailed as one of the first, if not the first, survival horror. It predates uh, Alone in the Dark and Resident Evil, certainly. So I had a chance to check that out today and uh, brought in uh, my lovely assistant to help me give this a try. Red alert. <laughs> Red alert. Creatures from Firestart Labs have broken out of containment. All personal... Uh, all personnel man your stations. This is not a drill. I feel like your first mistake was naming it Firestart Labs. <laughs> <It> seems <laughs> ominous. <laughs> uh, welcome to uh, Explodey Space Station. Uh, we want you to feel safe here at Explodey. And we had a chance to run through this thing, and uh, I've got a bunch to say about it. Now, so does Jeff. I saw an interesting interview with him and Matt Barton on Matt Chat, where uh, he explained just how difficult this whole thing was. The most painful game I've ever worked on in my entire career. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, you was, worked on a lot, too, so that's saying something. That was hard. It was, um, I mean, we just absolutely, we were trying to do way too much. We were drinking the, the Trip Hawkins Kool-Aid. Can a computer make you cry, you know? And we were... We were trying to push the envelope and see if we could see if we could make it happen. And you'd just shoot for as high as you could possibly go. We didn't know what games could do, and, and everybody was pushing really hard to see to see what you could make happen. And uh, and that, that's what we did on that game. It was I mean, it was crazy. Like, like I said, it was crazy to even try to make that game. And, and nowadays, I wouldn't let myself make that game. But. Now, uh, when playing this thing, uh, one of the things uh, both of us noticed is uh, that there was a lot of fun uh, detail, like the jump scares uh, were um, not something you were expecting out of a Commodore 64 game. And all the little um, uh, cutscenes and additions of dialogue and they actually used the actors which was interesting um, I thought really really helped add to the cinematic feel now um, speaking of the detail this thing is packed full and um, Jeff actually talked about that as well squeezing every little drop of power they could out of the Commodore 64 I think we worked on that game for about three years and we used absolutely every piece of memory in the Commodore. And the, the one, the coolest little story about that or the anecdote was that our programmer, uh, Darius Lukasuk, was, he found 10 bytes in the ROMs that he could use. And it was, he was ecstatic because we found <laughs> these 10 bytes that we could use to point to different things uh, because we were just absolutely out of memory. And I think a lot of that really shows uh, there's always something like moving in the background. Uh, there's a lot of like lights and gadgets and uh, there's a lot of you know, sections on the ship that make sense that uh, have these extra rooms. It just feels like people live there. It feels like this is a working space station. So put a lot of detail and love into that. And also, uh, there's this, this whole other scene where a blackout occurs and the entire color palette of the game changes to just like a black and a white. Um, so you can see a little bit enough to get around, but it's tough. You, you don't see the corridor names. And yeah, it's just fun that they were able to pull all these little twists um, out of the color palettes and out of the um, the frame rates and the cutscenes and all that stuff. So at any rate, I could really see some of the precursors to things like Rise of the Dragon, where they were using those you know, actual models for these dialogue sequences in the computer panels. Um, in in fact, at the beginning during the credits, you uh, see the models that were credited. So totally totally adding to that cinematic feel. Now, uh, also talking about the sound real quick, I, I did find it to be uh, really eerie. Uh, the title sequence was kind of discordant and created a mood.
And like, there's no music during the main portion of the game, uh, but you can hear all the sound effects, like your footsteps and the doors opening. So I think that kind of adds to the quietness and isolation of a space station feel of that sense. So that really fits. And there is some tense music uh, when you're leading up to something interesting or when an alien appears. So it's so super appropriate. And um, I just have to say the whole atmosphere uh, really does feel like a survival horror. I feel after having played this, yeah, it's got that low ammo. You're running scared. Uh, you're exploring. You're unlocking. It's got key cards. Uh, all the all the elements I would expect to be there. Um, you can explore these different rooms and chambers. So, yeah, I, I feel the survival horror is there, but also, you know, it does the space game thing well, where you know, clearly we're borrowing from aliens a lot, uh, where there is that sense of isolation and, man, there's a big, bad, scary alien coming for you. So, yeah, mission accomplished. They did great. Now, I will say a few few tips I might give for someone playing this game. I don't know, a few decades after the fact. Um, I really should have been looking at that map the whole time. So, I recommend having that out. It's not intuitive, per se. But once you see it laid on the map, like, oh, this makes total sense. Now I get it. So, I would definitely recommend that, and also, uh, just sort of generally reading the manual, there's a bunch of helpful hints. So, read through that whole thing, tells you where to get some key cards, uh, reminds you to check that radio, which I didn't do initially, <laughs> messed me up a little. Um, and yeah, the last thing I think I would recommend on this is, I did have a better experience using Vice. I, I mean, I really, I do enjoy, enjoy using the Commodore 64 itself uh, for most things, and I would probably go back to this and give it a shot, but... I had an awful, awful hard time. I had an awful hard time with the disc swapping, and it crashed a couple times. So the Vice uh, save states really saved me, or they call them snapshots. So the save states are generally useful, and it just saved me from a ton of loading, and it's what got me to get through the game. I still ran into a couple weird loading issues. I feel like I had to detach the disc image more than I, I needed to. So I don't know. could be me, but... Um, at any rate, I got through it, and playing Vice got me through some of the time suck involved with all the disc, disc swapping, and, you know, there's a cool load and save feature, but it just all takes time. So, I am here to recommend the game. I thought it was fun. Um, you know, it's a little clunky, I guess, and it can be slow, so I guess, you know, be prepared to have a touch of patience, but I really enjoyed exploring this station. I'm going to go back. Actually, there is, like, different ways to kill this super alien <laughs> that pops out towards the end, and there's rooms I didn't have a chance to check out. So I, I'm i going to enjoy actually going back to this game and exploring a little more. I think it's got replayability. And if that's not a, a vouch of confidence, I don't know what is. I will also mention uh, there is a, a 2006 uh, remake of sorts. It is actually uh, a competition uh, piece. It was, according to Moby Games, uh, developed in two and a half months. So it's not meant to be an epic. But... Uh, if you've played the C64 game in particular, I think it's fun to see this whole map laid out in 3D. It it really makes makes the map make more sense just seeing it that way. So so that was fun. Um, I'll mention uh, the gentleman who made it, Eric Hogan, um, made something else with the same engine, uh, Derelict, which looks a lot better, fleshed out. It's not made for some competition. Took the time to, to make a fully fleshed out game. So I'd probably recommend that, but... Um, yeah, for those who have played Project Firestart, check out the 2006 remake. It's fun. I, I enjoyed uh, checking out a bit. I haven't gotten through all of it, so maybe that and Derelict would be fun to check out in the future. So uh, yes, uh, I say, I say this guy, I say this game got robbed, <laughs> actually, of its its due. Um, Jeff mentions he, they had no idea if this game was considered to be good or not. Uh, until years and years, if not decades, later. So I believe because they were leaving EA at the time, it was a super late Commodore 64 release. It just got no promotion. It got no promotion, reviews, etc. And since the Commodore 64 was sort of falling off anyways, it just it, it fell through the cracks, which is super unfortunate. I think it deserves to be up there uh, and mentioned in the same breath as things like Maniac Mansion even. Um, it's it's got a fun story and and yeah you can definitely see how at the time they were pushing a ton of boundaries uh, there's that uh, that EA 
article, uh, Can a Computer Make You Cry? And they were really trying to pack in a ton of fun experiences into this game. Into this game. So I say mission accomplished. I say it's great. Um, and as a Halloween game, yeah, spooky, scary, fun. Recommend it. Enjoy. Happy Halloween. Love y'all. Welcome to the Commodore 64 mm -hmm. experience. I love disc reading sounds, honestly, yeah, so things. I'm okay with yeah. it. Well, the game's loading. We can make a sandwich, go to the bathroom. <laughs> hey! Okay. Now, let's see what I just did to myself since I left Prometheus. Did I just kill everyone? Is the game over? Yep. John, you really let us down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, innocent thousands will die because of your cowardice. I don't have the stuff, Colonel. I relieve you. Okay, you leave your duties. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm glad you tried that. Yeah.